Electric potential due to continuous charge distributions. Now we're going to generalize what we know for uh, point charges to continuous charge distributions. Let's say that we have an arbitrarily shaped object which is charged and it has charge elements dq1, dq2, dq3, etc. infinite number of charge elements. So each of these point charges will have a potential kqi over ri at point p. So the potential at point P due to a charge distribution will be the sum of the contributions from individual charges so that delta V due to the uh, charge delta Q will be K delta Q over R. Now in the limit, this delta becomes a differential D. The summation that we have for the total contribution will turn into an integration. So sum over i, k delta qi over ri, for each point charge delta qi at a distance ri from point p, we have the sum of the contributions giving us the total potential. This is the discrete charge distribution case. If this is a continuous charge distribution, this summation is replaced by integration and delta Q becomes dQ. So we have integral K dQ over R for the continuous charge distribution. This is one way of calculating the potential at point B, P. Alternatively, if the electric field is known, we know that the potential at point P is minus the integral, path integral E dot ds. Since we take the potential to be zero at infinity, this would start from infinity to position uh, of point P. E, e, so this, but, but this requires that the electric field is known as a function of position. Now, since potential is a scalar quantity, we don't have to worry about its components. We obtain potential variation with uh, spatial coordinates. And uh, remember that usually we take the potential to be zero at infinity. There is one exception. If the charge distribution extends to infinity, some other point must be selected as the reference point.